Well, hello everybody and welcome back to Lisa's Coloring Corner. I am finally getting back to part two of coloring out of Jade Summers' Intricate Mandalas Coloring Book. And we were coloring with the Sargent Art Glitter Gel Pens. They come in a pack of 10, but you can get, if you didn't see part one, you can get bulk refills. These are packs of 25 for each particular color. And they're seven bucks a piece, so can't go wrong with that. I'll link everything down below that I am using today. So we were coloring this let's get out okay i think where i left off was we were going to be coloring these leaves seeing as how i only have one green in this set that's what we'll be using let me zoom you all in is that close enough there all right so how is everybody today i apologize i meant to get this out yesterday today is sunday so i will be getting this out today at calm hell or high water <laughs> because yeah this should have been out yesterday already i like to do my color and chats on saturday but i spent all day and i'm going to be doing a separate video on my organizational binders but i worked the vast majority of the day <laughs> <laughs> getting that uh, a little while ago I had done a video swatching out and reviewing the 160 set of the season I think that's maybe how it's pronounced uh, colored pencils and so I had a few requests for the color chart for those pencils and I hadn't yet gotten it done and because when I swatched them they were really out of order I it, yeah it took me a long long time to get them in the order that I wanted so I'd go through and swatch them out you know write down all the uh, names and numbers for each one is this getting empty no it's not shouldn't be and you know then put them in the order re-swatch them out <laughs> put them in the order that i wanted took a few times of re-swatching out and writing everything out before i kind of got them in the order that i wanted then to type it all up and do the good swatching <laughs> But yeah, um, for those of you who did request that, could you please send me an email again asking for them? Um, this is what I came up with. I've been really working on color, color charts, so I have a few um, to announce to you. So I do have the Cezanne colored pencil chart that I worked on yesterday beautiful colors in this set so i really really like them um if i think of it i will link this video down below where i swatch these all out in case you are interested in purchasing them for yourself i think they're a great budget friendly pencil then i finally <laughs> got the new and updated zig clean color real brush color chart completed and this is with the um, additional 10, well, nine with a colorless blender uh, uh, pen set that that came out. Now you can just purchase the 90 set. Before, when I bought mine originally, it was only an 80 set. So yeah, now I got the chart updated. Um, I do now, and I got some requests for this one too, the IO IO marker. 
uh, color chart. And so I do have this one all completed. And then, because I want to use these, I've used the, and I've done a, a swatch of this too. This is the Limoche dual tip markers. Uh, so they have a brush tip on one end and a fine liner on the other. So I wanted to start using these. And of course, they did not have any names or numbers on. So I just labeled each one and then made a color chart like this. So, um, yeah, I, I made that color chart too. Um, but yeah, so I have these color charts done. The only ones I have left to do now are the Arteza watercolor pencils. And long, long time ago, I swatched and reviewed the Castle Art colored pencils. Never did do a color chart for those. So uh, that's another one I want to work on in my spare time. <laughs> yeah, so just thought I would mention those uh, color charts that I do have completed now if anybody is interested in them. So let's get back to our picture. I just thought I would jump right in there and, and mention that before I forgot. Oh, so yeah, I'm doing pretty good. It was a busy, busy weekend. Like I said, I worked on that color chart all day yesterday and was still going to um, do this color and chat last night. This is for the color along that I am co-hosting with John, the bibliophile colorist, and Sandy from Color Creatively. And it is called Jelly January 2020. Jelly with a G. <laughs> and uh, yeah. So, I hope some of you will be able to participate in the color along. As you all know, gel pens are my favorite. So, this is definitely right up my alley. Plus, Sandy is also hosting this month a color along um, for mandalas. And uh, so this kind of hits both color alongs in one picture. And you could see any of that. Way to go, Lisa. Okay. So yeah, I was so tired last night. And not only that, but my back hurt so bad and it had to have been from I was sitting at the dining room table doing all that swatching and everything and typing up and all of that and it just killed my back. I'm so used to coloring and doing everything in my living room chair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm spoiled and that gives me back support so whether I'm coloring at this desk whether I'm doing something at the table diamond painting after on my drafting table it all hurts my back I have a bad lower back anyhow but uh, the only place I'm really comfortable <laughs> is my living room chair so yeah I'd didn't really think I'd be able to comfortably do a color and chat last night with my back hurting like that. But just gave it a little bit of rest overnight and it is fine. And oh my gosh, I don't think I got so much sleep as I did last night in a long, long time. I typically only get like six hours of sleep six six and a half but i fell asleep in the chair <laughs> last night 
because um, I kicked back in the chair with my back hurting so bad and yep zonked out <laughs> before Bob even went to bed then I woke up for a while and uh, ended up going to bed not too much later so I got more sleep last night than I have in a long long time <laughs> which evidently my body needed it was saying hey give me some rest I don't want to continue like this and <laughs> with uh, watching Maddie and Levi this week boy especially Friday Ooh. One wasn't crying, the other one was, and sometimes they both were at the same time. So much fun. But I think Levi is starting to cut teeth. Oh, and I had a couple questions from you guys. For you new subscribers, I babysit my grandchildren every day. And I have three-year-old Maddie, Madison and five month old Levi and then on Fridays I also have my 11 year old grandson Jaden and those are all my daughter Heather's kids so yeah she she lives about an hour and a, a hour away way north of me but then works down here in Wassa well I live quite a ways west of Wassa so she's got to come all the way out here to Marathon and then drive back to Wassa so yeah she's got quite a drive in the morning and at night I don't know how she does it because she doesn't get done work until well now she's getting off a little bit early she used to not get done till like 7 7 30 at night now she's been taking off at six since she's had Levi. So she's usually by me by 6.30 to pick up the kids, but still a good hour drive then to get home. So she's not getting home till like 7.30. So long, long drive. But um, with my Apple Watch now, I've been keeping track of you know the pedometer on here and so I was kind of watching how much I was walking this week you would not believe I was flabbergasted and I'm, at first I'm like that can't be right <laughs> do you know this week between Madison and oh especially Levi because I think like I said I think he's cutting teeth so he's super duper cranky. Sometimes the only way I can get him to quiet down is by walking around with him. And boy, as soon as I try to sit down, I mean, my butt barely has to hit that cushion. <laughs> and he's starting to cry again. When is it about grandma sitting down, dude? I walked over. 16 and a half miles this week <laughs> that's a lot of miles <laughs> so it was over you know uh three miles a day i think uh yeah it would be over three miles a day oh my gosh it's like no wonder i'm tired no wonder my back hurts <laughs> <laughs> my arms oh my gosh my arms get so tired because he's a chubby little guy so he's not exactly light <laughs> especially when you're walking and walking I have like a circle in my house and uh, it goes around I have a dual sided stone wall fireplace and the living room's on one side and then this room which is supposed to be a family room is on the other side and then 
So you walk through the living room, through the dining room, a little bit into the kitchen, and then through here, and around and around and around. <laughs> and, uh, yep, around and around we go. And then, of course, Maddie's got to get in on it, you know. So she wants me to chase her and catch her. So then I'm running or walking real fast with Levi to try to catch her. <laughs> and sometimes I'll scare the heck out of her because she's going around and around and around and then all of a sudden I'll turn the other direction <laughs> and she doesn't know it. I'll come around the corner and she just screeches and scares the heck out of Levi. <laughs> he just jumps. Uh, I'm surprised he doesn't cry. That one time, I can't remember what we were doing, but she had screeched. And all of a sudden, he lets out this big wail. He's like, Oi, Maddie, you scared him. Uh, she says, Well, you scared me. <laughs> I said, oh, Okay, so it's my fault he's crying. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she's so funny. She has been coming out with some doozy stories lately. She uh, had gotten, well, she's in love with Frozen, like most girls, little girls are, and uh, had gotten a number of Frozen items for Christmas. And she had gotten this really pretty dress that she had to wear here the other day. And Heather had picked up some slippers some frozen slippers for her at walmart and i said those are so cute i said i want some just like it and she says well you can go buy some i says no i don't think they make them big enough for me and she says yes they do and i said they do and she said yeah and i said well do you think you could go and get me some <laughs> <laughs> and she says, I said, do you have enough money? She goes, well, I'll just go to the money shop. <laughs> she was going to go to the money store and go get some money. I thought, boy, if it only worked that way, right? I said, oh, you're going to go get some money and then go and get me some slippers? Uh-huh. And uh, Heather had gotten these from walmart and i said and she said something about going to walmart <laughs> oh she was just so funny go to the money store i guess in a way they do have money stores right cash you know bar borrow loan shops i guess those technically are uh, money stores <laughs> she doesn't realize you got to pay the money back Oh, she's so funny. Another, f oh God, this girl. Um, it was a couple weeks ago, Adam, which is Heather's boyfriend, the dad of these kids. Um, I can't remember where he found these mice. It was outside, but I don't know if it was like under his truck or... I don't know, I don't remember. But big mean Adam, you know, doesn't like any animal unless it's a dog, couldn't kill these little mice. So he brings them in the house in a five gallon bucket. <laughs> and Heather comes home and they ended up, he put some uh, straw in there for them. I couldn't believe it when Heather's telling me this. I said, Adam did all that. She said, yeah. <laughs> and so then they got a water dish for him and stuff to feed him. And those ended up becoming, Maddie called them her sweeties. So she always had to check on her sweeties. And Adam kept saying, you know, they were... They didn't know if they should just let them go, if they should, you know, dig like something out of the snow that they could maybe nest in or, you know, they just, they don't really know what to do with them or, you know, keep them till spring and then let them go. But 
Yeah, Maddie, you know, hears these stories about, you know, how Daddy's going to end up killing these mice. <laughs> Poor traumatized little thing. And, uh, but Daddy didn't let him go yet. And so, yeah, she was, I guess, sitting one night this past week eating supper. And, of course, this pail had to be by her. She had to have her sweeties by her. And <laughs> she had to go potty. So she proceeded to go get the bucket. And Daddy says, no, you can, you know, just leave them, you know, here. Just go potty. No, i got to take my sweeties with me. And Adam's like, no, they'll they'll be okay. Just just go to the bathroom. And then she looks straight at him, and she goes, "You kill them, I kill you." <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, so funny! I could just picture her saying this. <laughs> She's like, "You better not kill my sweeties." <sighs> oh God. And, you know, she kind of knows, you know, how they are and stuff because her and Jaden have pet rats. So this is just, you know, smaller versions of those. Oh, God, what a hoot, huh? You killed them, I kill you. Or if she's really being, you know, she wants to really put emphasis on something, she puts her hand on her hip. And she just looks at you and, you know, emphatically states whatever. <laughs> it's like, oh, really? I love to listen to her when she's playing, like, with her. She had a number of frozen Barbie dolls for Christmas, too. And Elsa and Anna and I forget what else. Okay. All right. And uh, she'll sit there and play with them. And I just love listening to her as she's, you know, she's the voices of each of those dolls, you know. It is just adorable. Of course, I don't want her to know that I'm listening and stuff. So if she glances up, of course, I'll, you know, look away. I don't want her to know. But yeah, and then all of a sudden you'll hear her, let it go, let it go. <laughs> she loves that song. Or the other one, do you want to build a snowman? <laughs> she knows all the songs. And I don't think Heather has taken her to Frozen 2 yet. I'm surprised. Of course, it's not like Heather's not busy or anything. <laughs> oh, that girl. She's so funny. You know, it's so hard babysitting five days a week now. You know, at least before Adam's dad got hurt um, and Adam's mom took him one day a week. You know, I had them four days a week, and, you know, that gets to be long enough days. But, boy, <laughs> when I'm having them five days a week, now that, that is very tiring. By Friday, I'm really ready for the weekend, and now the weekends go so fast. It's not fair. But, you know, I, I keep telling myself, you know, Grandma, at least... You get to watch your grandkids grow up. You're a part of their lives. Oh, and this is a new pen. Shake it up a little bit. There we go. These Sergeant Arts are just so smooth coloring and so juicy. I love them. And many, many times when I'm coloring my designs, all I need are the basic colors. So, you know, I don't need huge 80 or 100 colors. But then there are other times where I want them. <laughs> so, then I have the 
Chromatech and Color Technique and Color It. Mainly those three are the bigger sets that I have. And mainly because you can get refills for them. I do also have, it's in my filing cabinet because I haven't gotten to them yet, but uh, Tanmit has a, I think it's, is that an 80 set? I think. And they come in this really nice plastic case. Cali Art used to have, I don't think Cali Art has them available anymore. They used to have the exact same glitter gel pen set, except for Cali Arts was in the flimsy plastic, you know, trays, like most other supplies we get. But tan mints come in the hard plastic, you know, sided case where you kind of flip open the pages and they're all hard plastic. So yeah, they come in really nice cases. I haven't checked recently if those are still available or not. But tan mitt uh, gel pens are good too. You just, I don't believe, I don't remember, I don't believe you can get refills for those though. I wish these Sargent Arts, rather than having to buy, you know, the whole entire box of additional pens, you know, because you just, you get a box of 25 pens, you know, it's not just the refill inks. I wish they would sell just the refills. It's not like you need a whole new pen. You just need the refill inside and then, you know, save room in the landfills, you know, with having to throw the entire pen out. And you would think it'd be cheaper for them too. So, I mean, they could, they could even sell the 10 packs, you know, of refills. I prefer having all the colors separate because I don't use the silver near as much or, you know, some of the colors you don't use as much. Everybody veers towards, you know, different colors, but so it is nice that you can order a 25 set of whatever you need. Did you just hear me gurgle? My throat gurgled. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it went again. Sorry, guys. Nasty. I don't know if that, I don't know if that came up on camera, but that's where my mic is. So it probably did. Not sure how long it's going to take to finish this. I have a few other videos that I want to record today too, so that I like to always pre-record some on the weekend so that I have content to put out for you guys during the week. And last weekend too, stuff just kept coming up. I didn't get a whole lot recorded, so boy, I did not have much to put out for you guys last week. I am sorry. I mean, I used to always put out a video every day. And that has not been happening. Number one, I just haven't had as many products to, you know, review or swatch or, you know, books to flip through. But, uh, But I actually do have a uh, coloring haul video, coloring book haul video to do too today. So hopefully I'll get to that. All right, now we have our last few colors to decide on. So what of the are these arches? What should those be? We have a lot of green. Don't have hardly any orange. So let's do this bigger part orange 
And let's do the inner arch red. So we'll have the red and the orange. So we got red, orange. Then I think I'm going to do that yellow. And then maybe pink and then purple around. I'll have to, we'll decide that when we get there. I, I never really decide things ahead of time until I get one part of it done. I'm like, okay, so now I need this color to kind of even things out and, <laughs> you know. All right, so we will do this. And I think I'm going to... No, wait, was I going to do it the other way around? Yes, I was. Okay. That's okay. We can go over that orange with the red. And I'm going to do them um, all as I go around so that I'm f not flipping you around quite so much. Okay, that one does look a little bit different, but in the grand scheme of things, you won't see it. I right now am working with my glitter gel pens in a David Hinken Jr. Uh, geometric book. And for you new subscribers, he is one of my all-time favorites of my pattern coloring books. There are 16 volumes, so you will see that in my end of the month coloring video, what I colored this month. And I don't know what I was thinking when I picked that page to color. Hoi, yo, 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 yo. Wow, I have been working on it for quite a while, and I'm not even half done. Oh, my heavens. It, it's not that it's super difficult, but it's got like lines in it that kind of go all over. And then you have to, and I made those orange, and then I got, what was the colors that I put around it? I can't remember. Purple and blue, I think. So it's kind of an odd color scheme. Um, but then you got to color all around those orange lines. So I got to color this way and then I can color up and down really good. But coloring side to side for me, I don't know why, but it, it's hard. And oh, yeah, coloring around all those little lines. Coloring the lines is, was a lot of fun. <laughs> it is now coloring around the lines. That is taking forever because they're super teeny, you know, little colored in lines, real itty bitty. And yeah, you'll you'll see what I'm talking about at the end of the month. <laughs> it's like, oh, Lisa, you were crazy for picking this out. I just felt like doing a, a detailed, you know, pattern. Well, I got it. Bit off more than I could chew. So I may, you know me and my whips. I do not do whips. <laughs> but in this case, I may have to make an exception because it's kind of driving me crazy. And I don't, I have a tendency then, once I get bored with a picture, I just race through it to try to get done. And I hate doing that. And I, whether I'm conscious of it or not, once I have a pattern, you know, figured out how I'm going to do it, what colors and stuff, and I color the first half of it, then it's like, okay, let's just hurry and get this one done so I can get on to the next one. <laughs> so then I rush through it. I always do that. And then I see other color tubers as they color, and it's like, oh my gosh, they're so patient with their coloring. I am never patient with my coloring, ever. Even, you know, coloring with gel pens and stuff, I just, I am not a patient colorist. And that's probably why I do not do a whole lot, although this year I want to start doing some of it, is... Uh, 
getting out my different brands of pencils, start coloring in a page and do some shading and you know and there again I may have to start doing some whips because depending on how detailed a particular picture is I don't think that that would be a picture that I could just stick with day after day after day when I color you know, or I am going to get bored with it and not want to finish it. Which would be a travesty because I always finish what I start. I think I can count on one hand the number of pictures that I have started and have not finished. Even if I've made a mistake on a pattern, I keep going. It's like, eh, so what? You know, it's a coloring page. And sometimes, you know, the mistake is small enough if something, you know, was out of order or, you know, let's say I colored this orange and this one red. That one you could probably see because it's a little bit more noticeable. But if it's a repeating pattern and it's a small enough pattern, if you look at the page as a whole, you are not going to be able to see that. So, and like I said, even if you can, if you can pick it out relatively easy, yeah, that's okay. I don't care. And yes, for you new subscribers, I do go through a heck of a lot of gel pens. <laughs> Uh, but I am definitely getting, uh, it used to be where I just, gel pen was the only thing that I colored with. I had Prismacolor pencils from years and years ago, and I had Prismacolor markers from years and years ago. But once I found gel pens, oh my gosh, I was hooked. <laughs> And that is pretty much all I colored with. And they are still my first love. But now Miss Anne from A Colorful Life quite a while ago got me hooked on markers too. And I love markers. Mostly alcohol based. But I do like fine liners too for certain books like my new fave, the Belba family coloring books where I use the X method instead of coloring in the whole square. You know, you just color each square with an X. Guess what? Just found out Belba family has come out with a new book. So, can't wait to get that one. Oh, it's of cats. I was hoping, seeing as how they had one out for dogs that they came out with a while ago. Boy, I was sure hoping they'd come out for, you know, one for cats, and they did. I'm still addicted to the Mandalas one, and I've colored a number of them out of there between that one and woman love that one too I think those are my two favorite and uh, yeah matter of fact I was just this morning gonna start another one out of the mandala book because I had to like I said I had to take a break from that intricate design I'm coloring with gel pens and I thought, oh, what better way to just, you know, kick back and relax for a while is to do one of my faves. And then I'm like, uh, no, Lisa, you really should work on color charts before I do some recording. So, yeah, I worked on the Zig one only to find out I had some typos in there. Thank heavens, as I was coloring in the chart. I could pair the color name and number to what I had on the chart. I don't know how I did that, but there were, there were a number of errors 
and then I didn't have them in the right order. I must have, I don't know, one or the other. I either had the color chart already typed up in the correct order and just didn't update the order of my marker case or vice versa because they did not coincide. So I just swatched them out how it had indicated on the color chart that I printed out that I had typed up already and then I reordered them again and re-swatched them out so now that is done and those are just so darn juicy I love those so I want to get those out too and color with them even if I I know they are watercolor you know brush pens but you know even if I just straight color with them and get more familiar see the thing that I have a harder time with is coloring with the real brush pens that have the brush tips you know not our not our fiber brush tips like the Copics and uh, you know some of the others that have brush tips but the real bristle brush tips to me they're they're hard to control and I'm not used to I don't paint with you know brushes or anything like that so it's something that I would have to get more familiar with but maybe we can maybe we could straight color a picture with those and see how that goes get uh, you know accustomed a little bit to coloring with the with the real bristle you know brushes brush pens because yeah I do okay going one way but then when I come I, is it coming back this way I don't adjust for I don't know if you know with the bristles splaying out in a certain way I don't know it's hard to describe but yeah Oh, here comes Misty to say hi. Hello, little Misty. I have three cats and a dog. So if you hear a uh, high-pitched bark in the background, that is my little Bella. She is a toy Yorkie Pomeranian. And yeah, she's got a really high-pitched bark. So I usually end up pausing. Let's go this way so we're not... So we're not coloring over the top of the gel pen. Misty, you gonna come say hi? No? She's my very aloof cat, but she is, she is Ms. Friendly. She is my, oh sure, now you're gonna hit my hand, you. Come here, come say hi. Should I zoom out? They can see you. Oh, there she is, there she is. Yes. Say hi to everybody, Misty. Look up and say hi. Say, I am Mama's big baby, and I climb in her lap every chance I get. This is the one that still has a teeny bit of blue in by her tail. Yeah, you can't hardly see it anymore. It's very, very pale. So it's just about all gone. But yeah, that's that story about... Ah, uh, Maddie, and I've talked about it a number of times in the past, how she decided to paint my cat. Mm-hmm. You're going to hit it again, aren't you? You cannot get my pad, Missy. No. Hey. <laughs> Are you going to go down? Or does Mama have to pause, give you some love, and then get you down, huh? Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. All right. I'm going to pause for a minute and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> She's like, but mama, I don't want to go down. I want to be up here and see what you're doing. Oh my gosh. No, I got cat here on me. Sorry, guys. Let me get that up. Anybody that has uh, pets and especially cats can relate, right? Uh-huh. I always have pet hair around. That's why I love the steam cleaner that I have. 
it picks up all the cat hair that gets down into the carpet, you know, that doesn't vacuum up no matter how much you go over it. <laughs> you, could, you could vacuum over one spot for like an hour <laughs> and you still wouldn't get all the cat hair out. But my steam cleaner really digs down in and gets it and it's really gross what it can cough up <laughs> big hairballs but uh, even my throw rug that I have underneath my coffee table in the living room it that thing is a darker color and it is really a a hair trap for the cat hair and I mean you can just see it on there even again though you're vacuuming it gets trapped in those fibers of the rug but steam cleaning it oh my gosh comes out looking brand new and again the stuff all the hair that it pulls out of that uh, rug is unbelievable so yeah you just Steam clean it, let it sit overnight, and re-vacuum in the morning. And all is good. It does take a while, though. It's a lot of work. Would be nice if a person could, you know, do it every week, but eh, that ain't going to happen. Even once a month would be nice, but like I said, it takes a long time to do and when I really want to do the living room up good um, we move all the furniture out of the living room push it into the dining room and let me tell you that couch is not easy to move oh my heavens and it does not have a sleeper sofa in but you swear to god it did oh my heavens it is so heavy I cannot move it by myself and I'm not a terrible weakling I feel I'm relatively strong but nah, not that thing Wow doesn't look like it should be that heavy when you look at it I wanted to push it down along the wall uh, to put up the tree Christmas tree in the corner nope couldn't do that either I couldn't budge that thing. So it's like, Bob, can you help me move this couch? So yeah, I have to have him help me with the furniture every time I want to steam clean. Most everything I can move myself. Coffee table is super duper heavy because it's, it's all solid wood. And it's one of those, I don't know if you've seen them or not. I absolutely love it. It has a top that um, you can pull up and over. And so then the kids can eat on there. They can color on there, um, whatever. But yeah, the top lifts up and then towards the couch. So, but yeah, it makes it really heavy because there's extra hardware in there then, extra metal. But thank heavens, that thing is on rollers. It's on wheels, so then I can move it that's on top of the area rug so when I vacuum vacuum the floor then I move the coffee table onto the floor so that I can vacuum the rug but yeah so it's still heavier than heck but with it being on wheels at least it's something I can move Anybody done anything interesting this weekend? Do tell. I haven't done anything interesting. This past week was extremely busy for house showings. I can't believe it. It's, you know, January, the middle of winter. I didn't expect to have any house showings. I had four of them between last weekend and this weekend well during the week and I'm like say what 
and then one of them wanted to come back a second time. This is when I was recording last weekend, that's right. So I always put my phone in uh, airplane mode when I record so that I don't get interrupted with the phone calls and whatnot. And here she had texted me while I was recording, so I didn't see the text. Asked if, you know, she knew it was short notice, but this person's parents, or this couple's parents, whatever, um, were in town and they wanted to show them the house and see what they thought or whatever. But they were just kind of passing through. So they wanted to come in a half an hour. I'm like, uh, <laughs> uh, mm, can I have an hour? <laughs> Give me an hour, please. And she said, okay, you know, I'll, I'll let them know that. Well, yeah, she did. And I just wanted a quick, you know, vacuum and, you know, just so everything, it was, you know, the house was clean and everything, but just do a, a once over, you know. And, uh, yeah, didn't even get done vacuuming. And Bob says, they're out there. I says, they weren't supposed to be here for another half an hour. So they were a half an hour early. Plus, I had the kids. This was during the week. How was, oh, it was New Year's Day. That's what it was. That was New Year's Day. I don't, maybe I talked about this then already. Because <laughs> uh, I'm like, how could I be recording during the week, I don't know. I can't remember now. Or, yeah, I don't know. I, I get confused. <laughs> but, yeah, so those people were a half hour early. And then um, I got a request for a showing. And, again, I was just, you know, thank heavens I had gotten up because this time I wanted to mop you know remop the floor and everything so that wouldn't have any footprints or smudges you know and then yeah revacuum and just tidy up refreshing up the bathrooms you know just everyday things that you do and I am so glad that I had gotten up early and did all that because these people were 45 minutes early. I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> oh my gosh, it was unreal. Maybe that was the time when I had to quick get the kids together and get them out in the car. Oh, that, it, you know, that just makes it so much worse when it's during the day, during the week because I have the kids. And if Bob is home, at least he can take Bella because we have to get Bella out of the house. Also, they, you know, they prefer not to have dogs home. It's okay to leave your cats, but they don't want dogs, you know, in the house when, you know, people come through. Because of course they're gonna bark like crazy. And some, you know, just, don't like strangers and you know some may bite who knows but so we always have to take Bella along well if Bob's home he'll he'll take Bella and then I'll take the kids so yeah we both got to be gone and do something for an hour because well I had to do it once already taking Bella and the kids and let me tell you that was not fun drive around for an hour because of course if you <laughs> you slow down and stop too much Levi's gonna cry he's got to have movement just like most babies do so yeah it's like ugh but of course now these last people never heard back from it's like that to me is just so rude if you don't want it at least say so and so now it's still a no-go we went and looked at a gorgeous gorgeous house it's in our price range um 
there's only a couple problems with it and of course no matter what house you look at it's not going to be perfect and I got to keep telling myself that but the two big drawbacks to this house is it's a prefab home it's a double wide so this place is huge um, it's got over 1700 square feet which is not bad but of course there's no basement which is a big bummer so it's like okay where am I gonna store everything I don't have a whole lot in my basement um, since going to town and clean in house when we first decided we were going to sell. So a lot of stuff in the basement got tossed or donated or, you know, given away, whatever. So main things that are down, there's a lot of Christmas stuff, bunch of home interior, you know, decorations for the wall which I never got to put up here because I just don't have a lot of wall space here. And, you know, there's a set of bunk beds down there that I'm going to get rid of. I don't need them. What else was down there? There's just, you know, a few things that I, most of which I don't really need. So... I think the vast majority of it could probably, there's a two car garage um, and a shed. So between those two things, and the, the two car garage is a relatively big one. So, you know, Bob could have his little workshop in the back of that. Now, of course, with it being a prefab home, the garage is not attached. And, see, this is the other thing that I have a problem with. The service door on the side of the garage, then, does not go directly to a door, you know, a side door in the house or something. You know, usually when you have a detached garage, the service door is real close or right across from a door, you know, to the house. So you don't have too far to go. Especially now if you're carrying groceries in the rain <laughs> or it's 30 below zero and blowing and snowing. That's when an attached garage comes in so handy. But no, this garage, <laughs> you can only go in through the front door. Once you come out of either the side door or where the garage door openers, you know, the big main doors. Um, yeah, got to go in through the front door, the main door. It's like, mm. so if that would happen, I think I would get a remote control front lock. Because then if you have your hands full and it's raining or whatever, you don't have to put everything down and unlock your door. You can just hit the remote. <laughs> it sounds easy enough to me. You know, either that or get like a awning for, you know, over the top of the door or something. So yeah, there are some drawbacks to the house. And when we went to see it, it was nighttime. So, it's on a big lot, like a half acre lot, and the taxes aren't bad. So, you know, we really couldn't see what the lot looked like and things. So, I asked if we could come see it this weekend again in, during the day. And she said she was totally booked up Saturday. So, we were going to try for today. Well... They said nothing, you know, we couldn't, there were no showings until Monday. I'm like, wow, Monday? I babysit during the day all week. Well, sometimes if I have an appointment, Heather takes a late lunch. And then she'll come out and watch the kids while I have an appointment. And then she'll go back into work, which I know is a pain in the butt for her. 
and that's why I try not to do it. When I had that one day off every week, I would plan all of my appointments, going to get groceries, everything on that Friday. And then it got switched to Tuesday, so I would make all my appointments for Tuesday. Oh well, yeah, now I have them all five. Uh, but I asked her if she could maybe take a late lunch um, tomorrow, Monday. And I explained to her why. And she said, oh, she goes, the only day that won't work is Monday because she's a manager and she has like five interviews to do tomorrow. And I said, okay. I said, how about Tuesday? Would Tuesday work? And she said, yeah, that's fine. So we're going to go. If Bob comes right home from work, he's here by 2.30. So I thought if we would make a time for 3 o'clock and go see it. So we'll be going to look at this house again on Tuesday. But it is just, it's so big, so huge living room. And they, when they advertise it online, in the realtor listings, they have it listed as having two but separate living rooms. Well... I guess you could look at it that way. To me, it's a living room and then a family room. <laughs> the family room having a gas burning fireplace, which would be my craft room. Yay! And then it has three bedrooms. It's got two and a half baths because there's a big master suite with a big bathroom shower jetted tub <laughs> and the master bedroom is right off the family room so that would just be perfect yeah and the other two bedrooms are nice size there's a huge huge kitchen that's all open to the living room and half bath off of there and laundry area yeah, we'll see. The other full bath is down by the other bedrooms. So overall, it would work really well for us. It's going to be way out of the way for Heather, which I feel guilty about. It's in a really nice neighborhood, though. And I told Heather, I said, I'm sorry, it's going to be so far out. She goes, well... She says it'll only be for a few more years. <laughs> Tell Levi start school. Oh. All right. Yeah. Do you think it would be okay if we do pink and then purple and, you know, kind of finish up with these colors around the outside? I think so. And then what I want to do is do a light color with uh, alcohol marker for the background. Um, I don't like leaving anything white. I don't know why, but yeah, that's just, that's just me. Let me take a sip. Alrighty. Okay, I'm back. I had to pause that for a little bit. I took that drink of soda and it gurgled up in my throat and it started me coughing. Oh my gosh. I don't know what it was. And whenever I cough, I sneeze. I don't know why. My kids always make fun of me. They go, Mom, you always go, <laughs> achoo, <laughs> achoo. <laughs> And they're right, I do. Oh, every time I cough, I can, it must tickle my nose when I cough. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, so I think I got that out of my system. Oh, I hope so. Oh, I had to go. My nose was running and everything. <laughs> oh, heavens. And then, of course, Bella see me up when I went to blow my nose and 
She starts woofing at me, so I figured she had to go potty, take her out. Oh my gosh. And like I said, I got a few other videos to make, but I'll have to make supper in a little bit. I'm making a bacon ranch, chicken bacon ranch casserole. Doesn't that sound good? Mm. Never me. I always try to look. Each weekend I make a bigger meal. And I always try to look for a new recipe each weekend to try. It's like, okay, pasta this weekend. Maybe something with rice next weekend. <laughs> Try to try to alternate the starch, right? Something with potato, then like hash browns or something. Next weekend, I was gonna either do a stir fry, something with rice and broccoli and stuff. So I'll look for a recipe for that, either on the internet or else I use a a lot on. Come on, pens, get out of my way on Pinterest so I usually find something and the thing that's neat another neat feature about having an Apple watch you can ask Siri you know just push this talk to Siri and say find me a recipe for chicken bacon ranch casserole and it'll bring some up and then you can click on it to see the recipe so then you have the whole recipe right on your phone as you're making it <laughs> you don't have to print it out or have your phone or... oh my gosh my speaking of my watch saved my butt this morning I went in to pick up my groceries from Walmart and <laughs> for you new subscribers Yes, I'm getting even lazier. I'm using the Walmart app where you can order your groceries online and then just go and pick them up. And once you get to Walmart, you park in one of the slots that are numbered. You use the app and you just, you say that you're there and what slot you're in and they'll, you know, come out with your order. Put it in the trunk for you. And... I get there, I pull into a slot or parking spot five, I think it was, and I reach for my phone to go to the app to say I'm there. No phone. I'm like, oh my God, I forgot my phone at home. Now what am I going to do? Well, there was a van next to me closer to Walmart, so it was blocking my view, but I thought I seen a gal loading groceries in one of the other cars that were sitting there so I get out of my car I thought well maybe I could just tell her I'm here you know in what spot I'm parked in well by the time I got out of my car got around this van that was in my way the person was gone she was back up by the door going back inside and I'm like oh my god what am I gonna do I don't want to go inside the store I had my PJ pants on yet <laughs> you know why get uh, out of your comfy clothes when you don't gotta normally get out of your car I'm like okay what am I gonna do and I'm like I looked at the sign and you either you know can uh, use the app which is the easiest and uh, or you can call this number and say you know what slot you're in and what your name and stuff is and I'm like phone that's right I have a phone on here so I just went to that and dialed the number you know there's a speaker over here and a mic and yeah called them on my watch I was saved I said to Bob when I got home I said Thank you, honey, so much again for my Apple Watch because he gave it to me for Christmas. Well, Christmas, our anniversary, my birthday, <laughs> everything throughout this year. Uh, and uh, I said, it saved my butt. I said, I forgot my phone at home. But yeah, worked really good. Some people with... Apple watches don't even you know if they're out and about and stuff they don't 
bother to bring their phones along anymore. I still feel better having my phone with because, I mean, yes, you can get your messages and to reply back to them, you just, you dictate. Or you can handwrite on the screen one letter at a time. No, thank you. <laughs> Unless it's a very short reply. But I've already, you know, dictated the reply. It's just that, of course, if you have odd words or, you know, something like that, it won't pick it up right. But, you know, and then you just say your punctuation also. So you'll say, what time are we going to meet? Question mark. And, yeah. Types it up just like that, and then you send it. Or if your phone rings, yeah, you can answer it right on your watch. It's really neat. I'm still getting used to it. Sorry, I flipped you around kind of fast that time, didn't I? <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's taking me a little bit to get used to it. But I'm having so much fun finding apps and got a new band for it this time. I like that one. Got a bunch of new bands that I bought <laughs> from AliExpress, so it's not like they were very expensive. And some different colored cases to go on. I have a really pretty uh, purple metallic band that I want to try on next. Got to accessorize it, right? Different, uh, see now, if I was still working, I am such a matchy, matchy person, you know, I would have to have my shoes match my outfit, and my jewelry always had to match my out, everything had to match. So if I was still working, I am sure that I would have to have a watch band to match all of my <laughs> outfits. <laughs> Uh, and I've accumulated enough bands now where I got a band organizer, of course, you know me and organizing. And you can put all the watch bands in it. But you know, they don't have anything out to organize the, they're called bumpers or cases, you know, these things. Whoops. And it's like, where are you supposed to store all them? So I got a little pencil pouch that I'm just going to throw them in. So that should work. Did I ever tell you guys my youngest daughter, Mallory, got into coloring? Yes. And so on her Christmas list was she wanted some markers. So I got her the big set, well not the huge set, the 100 set of Cali Art markers. And then there was a holiday special of a great big pack of Sharpies. Fine tip and ultra fine tip. So I got her them. I should uh, call her and see or text her or whatever. She's so hard to get a hold of to call, so I typically just end up texting my kids more than more than calling. See how she likes them if she's been coloring. She's getting to the point like me now. Doesn't like to go anywhere because I want to be home coloring. <laughs> Isn't that bad? Ugh. That's when you know you're truly addicted. This purple looks kind of funky around the orange, yellow, and red, doesn't it? But I kind of wanted to tie in the pink and the purple again. And then my oldest daughter, Tanya, knew, you know, how big I was into coloring. So she bought me a bunch of coloring books. And she gave me the present to open and 
she goes, oh, this is going to be good. And I'm like, what? And she goes, oh, just wait. <laughs> so I open the box and inside is a whole bunch of individually wrapped items, flat square items in red, white, and green. No. Yeah. Red, white, and green tissue paper. Each one was a different color. And I unwrapped the first one and I can't remember what it what it was. It was something, you know, normal. <laughs> and then there was a actually a jade summer book and it was uh, sugar skulls which I don't have so it's like oh that's cool but there were oh gosh how many four or five the next four or five coloring books and she had this smirk on her face and I opened up the or unwrapped the first one it's a swearing one <laughs> she bought me like four of the swearing uh, naughty coloring books and I have never bought those number one I wouldn't be able to color them out of them on camera number two I just I don't know never really had the inkling to color swear words <laughs> but maybe if you had a really upsetting day and you wanted to get some of your aggressions out you could color one with a good swear word in it <laughs> Uh, oh god and she was just sitting there laughing i said you do know i don't have any of these she goes i figured you wouldn't <laughs> now i know what she was smirking about and saying oh well, this is gonna be good oh man oh man so i'll have to find a special shelf just for them <laughs> oh leave it to her that's my oldest daughter for you. She's a rebel. <laughs> oh, heavens. That was funny. And then my son Cameron, for another coloring supply, I had on my wish list the big, uh, I think it's 144 slot uh, Arteza marker case because all of the Arteza markers I have don't fit in the, is it the 120 slot, I think? Um, because they had sent me for review the 60 set and then the flesh tone set and the gray tone set. Well, I kind of combined them all together when I made the color chart and stuff, so I wanted to put them all in one marker case. Well. They don't all fit in the 120, and I didn't want to get one of those big Whopper 168s again. So I thought, hmm, let's, you know, get the 144. And it was on my wish list. I hadn't bought it yet, and he must have seen that. So now I have one. Yay! Okay, we only have the background left to do. And. What color shall we go with? Don't want to do yellow. We could either go with pale blue. I want a real pale pastel -y background. And there's not a lot of blue in here, is there? Maybe a real pale blue would be pretty. Hmm see what I have. I um, brought over my IO IO. Let me zoom you in. My IO IO markers, which I just love because I love this case. This case is so neat. Um, it's not the canvas. It's the foul leather, I guess you'd call it. And then inside, and I do have a review video out there of these. Um, is a there's a plastic grid down in there that keeps these all straight up and down which i love oh and i didn't bring my swatch shirt oh yes i did because i just did that ha, ha 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 knew i had them over here for a reason so let's see what pale colors we have here that would work 
We have a real pale purple. These are both kind of pale, but that one's a little bit lighter. That is the lightest blue I have. I want something super duper light. Hmm, so it's either the pale purple or the pale blue, because I don't have a real pale pink. This is called powder pink, but that's more a skin tone than anything. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Dilemmas, dilemmas. I just think that one's going to be a little too dark. Let's go with this super light purple. It's actually called pale blue, <laughs> but it's really a purple. And let's just try that one. I don't know if it's going to be too much purple. Like I said, I kind of wanted a pale um, pale blue, but... Oops, let's put a sheet underneath, Lisa. There we go. So yeah, we should actually get this done. Really have no idea how long this video is because now I had to pause it a few times. So I'll have to get a few uh, clips together in the editor to uh, get the video editing and rendering. Just have to make sure I get them in the right order. <laughs> it's really a pain going around all these. And then, of course, you know, tonight is the Packer playoff game against Seattle, so gotta watch that. I don't know. Packers are at home, so they're favored to win, but mm, I don't know. Because, boy, they haven't been looking too good lately, even though they've won. Oh, I do kind of like this pale purple. If they're not on, which lately they haven't been, I don't know. Seattle's a pretty good team, so we shall see. Then if we win, we have to play San Francisco next week, and I really don't think we'll, we would win that, but one never knows, right? Never know. Everybody can have an off day because <laughs> San Francisco is really good. I think they've, they uh, do they have the same record as us with three losses or did they only lose two? I can't remember, but yeah. Now, of course, as I go around, they're going to connect. Oh, I didn't even zoom in. Sorry, guys. They're going to connect at one point, so I am going to have a line here. There's not much I can do about it, <laughs> so I'm just going to have to put up with that. But now, like here, I'm going to stop it right there, because then if there's a line there, you won't hardly be able to see it. Here, there wasn't a whole lot I could do. I didn't think it would, you know, take too much, but uh, it's going to take a little longer than I thought to go around all of this. Okay, we'll stop it right there. And around and around we go. Got quiet, didn't I? <laughs> I'm concentrating, can you tell? 
especially when I'm trying to go fast so I don't get lines with the alcohol markers. I do like using uh, alcohol markers with the uh, glitter gel pen. It works really good. The Actually, the glitter gel pen and especially metallic gel pens, they really resist the ink of the alcohol marker. And... So, of course, you, you know, you can't go directly over the, uh, the gel pen. But if you go up close to it and stuff, it has a tendency of not bleeding across the lines quite as much as it normally does. Especially in these books, like Jade Summers, where they, Jade Summer, there we go again, Jade Summers. Um, this particular type of Amazon paper that is so thirsty um, really sucks up a lot of ink and uh, so yeah when you lay down the gel pen first it works really well to do a background in alcohol inks It's just that like, you know, like here on mandalas, as you go around, the other end has dried already. So you are going to wind up with a line, which I don't like. But there's not a whole lot you could do for it, you know, to try to, other than doing some on this side, quick doing some on this side, quick doing some on this side. Yeah, that would be really hard to do. So a lot of times you'll see people, if they're coloring with, you know, alcohol markers, kind of, you know, go as fast as they can so they don't get lines. And sometimes it's just hard to do. You know, when you're trying to be accurate and not color over the lines or out of the lines whatever the case may be all right we're getting there folks we are getting there we'll only have one more ring after this does anybody have their christmas tree up yet i'm bad I do, <laughs> but I figure I'm going to take it down while the packers are on. I figure I can do that and listen at the same time. I can do two things at once. Yes, I can. Especially as a woman. They always say a woman can uh, dual task easier than men, right? Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been a proven fact. Not saying you guys can't do more than one thing at a time, but it's just proven that we're better at it. <laughs> so, yeah. Do that while the game is on. Get that thing down. It's still not that late to have your tree up. We have people in the neighborhood that still have their lights on outside at night, so. Of course, you spend all that time putting lights up. I leave them on too. We used to have a lot of lights up outside, hanging from the roof and and then a couple years ago, my kids all bought me, I wanted some more decorations for outside, so they bought me some, and now they're still in the box, because then Bob got sick. 
And those for you that are newer subscribers, he had esophageal cancer and ended up having to have his esophagus removed. And so, yeah, I didn't make him put up Christmas decorations outside. And I have no idea how he rigged everything up to extension cords and stuff. But I want to next Christmas for sure get on all those cute lit up reindeer and stuff that the kids got me. Hopefully I'll be in a new place by then. The way it's going though, you never know. Oh, I like how that's looking. Yeah, I think this light purple background is working fine. Now, where can I start so you won't see it much? Like right there. Huh? Do it right in there. Did you hear that they are coming out in 2020 with four new quarters? And they are featuring the uh, America the Beautiful, our national parks. And the first one, I believe it's the first one, that they are coming out with, Mama Fruit Bat and this one's for you and from a colorful life um, they are coming out with a fruit bat and it's a mama fruit bat with a baby is that not adorable can't remember what the other ones all are one I think is of a girl planting a tree or something this one with the fruit bed is the Samoyan National Park. So they um, are featuring a Samoyan fruit bed hanging upside down and then she's got her baby. So Anne, you're definitely gonna have to get some of those. <laughs> They're made just for you. I got two, whoops, sorry guys was grabbing stuff over here and my mic shook, shook the camera like crazy. Try not to get too dizzy. Stuff was all in my way. So I said, could never have too big of a desk. Because no matter how big it is, it starts getting crowded once you get a few things on your desk to record. And then we'll do the outside. I didn't want to do both rings at the same time. Or I'd really have to rush. <laughs> oh, I thought I heard a cat jump up here again. Thought maybe Misty was back to visit. Can't believe Midnight hasn't come up. What was that? I don't know. Something slipped down over by the printer. My son came over yesterday and got my other monochrome printer. So that cleaned up some space on my desk because I had both printers over here on the desk to my right because I have a big L-shaped desk. And yeah, I had both printers on the L-shape of it. And yeah, now with that printer gone, I still have my big color laser printer, but at least, you know, the one is out of the way now. So I gave him that and I had a number of toner cartridges. 
my daughter too. She had gotten a what is it called? A Chromebook the year before last for Christmas. And they wanted to get she just bought a Hewlett Packard or something printer so she could print things out. She's a troop leader and and stuff for Boy Scouts and she just always has a bunch of stuff to print out for Boy Scouts and so she wanted a printer. Well come to find out the hard way that let's see where's a good place to start here maybe in here um, that not all printers will connect to a Chromebook and so I thought, hmm, okay, that might be a Christmas idea. So I did some research and, yeah, I found some that, you know, would work with Chromebooks. So got her a printer for Christmas. I should uh, get a hold of her, too, and see if her printer's working out for her. And I got her some extra toner cartridges and some paper, so... She should be all set for a while. So that I always like to get each of the kids and grandkids one bigger present and then a couple of just, you know, smaller things. So that was her big present. And then the kids get such a kick out of me because they're two from stickers, you know, that I write out. I put a little number up in the corner. Because I can't remember what the presents are once they're wrapped, you know. Well, this one is this, and this one's that. And I don't want them to open their big one before their little ones. You know, or they get their big one, they'll be disappointed by the little ones. <laughs> so I always put a number up in the corner in the order I want them to open them. <laughs> oh, leave it to me, right? Yeah, so my kids always got a bang out of that. And another tradition that I had started, well, I guess you couldn't call it a tradition if I started it, but started it with my kids, and now Heather is making it a tradition with her kids, is, you know, stocking stuffers to, the kids always get so excited before Christmas anyhow, as they're waiting for Santa to come. So I always bought them seven stocking stuffers and then the week of christmas every day they got to open a stocking stuffer and they could pick out which one they wanted to open no i didn't number them <laughs> you have to open number three although that'd be kind of fun too <coughs> but this way they have their choice of you know which one they want to open and it was you know the kids always just loved it so now yeah Heather's doing it with her kids I don't know if Tanya does it with her boys or not and my other two kids don't have kids yet so and Mallory better not for a while because she's only engaged she's not married <laughs> Although these days, I guess you don't have to be married, do you? Heather and Adam aren't married, but it's like they are. They just didn't know what order they wanted to go in. <laughs> have the kids get a house, get married. Hmm. Evidently, the getting married is last because they had the kids, they got the house. <laughs> <coughs> Priorities, you know. Oh, men are so gun shy, aren't they? I guess it's not always the men, but typically it is. And nowadays it's a lot of money. I guess it doesn't have to be. Gosh, when I heard what the average is for a wedding, I'm like, you have to be kidding me. It was just an atrocious amount of thousands of dollars. And I'm like, what? Why? You know, to spend $2,000 on a wedding dress? Uh, no. You know, you're only going to wear it once. 
for one day. I don't, I mean, I guess if you can afford it, go for it, but. Oh my gosh, there we are. Yeah, the purple is really funky with the uh, reds, yellows, and oranges, and so. So we just kind of got a, a mix of colors here. Let's zoom in just a little. There we go. Yeah, maybe each ring I should have done a different pale color. I, you know, now that I see it like this, I think that would have been better. Like done purple in here, maybe the pale blue here, and then maybe a pale, I don't know, pale something <laughs> out here. I think that would have been much better because now it's so much light purple. But, uh, oh well. It still looks okay. Let me get this uh, marker back. Zip that up. So what do you think of it? Finally got part two done. I don't know what I'm going to be coloring yet for my next color and chat. I wanted to color something with marker and I'm having a problem here. Okay, I'll just wait. I um, wanted to color something with marker. For the next color and chat, I'm not sure what book. I think I'm going to color with Cali Art. So, may do a grayscale picture, a Jade Summer grayscale picture. Hmm. So, yeah. And then um, after that, I'm going to do another glitter gel pen picture. And then I was requested to do a picture with the um, Cezanne colored pencils. That I just swatched out um, and did the review video of and so I, I do want to get one of those out too now I don't think it's going to be a lot of blending colors together it's probably going to be mostly straight coloring um, but I do want to do a little bit of blending too so that you guys can see you know how well they blend together um, because I think that's always one of the things you wonder about, right? When you get a, a new set of markers or a new set of pencils is, can the colors blend together well? So I do want to do a little bit of that in the picture. But like I said, I think um, probably a lot of it's going to maybe, <laughs> probably a lot of it's maybe, <laughs> that was good, right? Uh, going to be straight colored. We'll see how it goes, I guess. Probably, maybe. <laughs> uh, in other words, I don't know yet at this time. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see when we get there. Probably depends on the picture that I picked out, too. So, All right, I guess that is it for part two of this jelly january 2020 color along again this was out of intricate mandalas coloring book by jade summer um and again i will link all um coloring materials book everything down below in the description i hope you liked watching this color along and if you did please hit that like button subscribe if you are new to my channel and don't forget to hit that bell so you know when i put out new videos i hope everybody is having a fantastic weekend and as always happy coloring bye guys